And welcome back to the verdict, Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here at the kind of the turn of a new year and a new Indeed. decade. Indeed. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, Terry Peach today about uh, agriculture in Oklahoma. The, for those of us in the city, sometimes it's easy to kind of lose track of just how important the agricultural sector is to our economy and uh, all that it encompasses. It is big business, lots of jobs, and we'll uh, kind of get a lowdown on that, as well as what other pending issues before Terry Peach, today's guest on The Verdict. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit and a stronger dollar, green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome to the show uh, Terry Peach, the uh, Secretary of the Department of uh, Secretary of Agriculture for Oklahoma. Uh, he uh, did his undergraduate work in agricultural education at Oklahoma State University. He taught agriculture in the Oklahoma school systems. He's a third generation farmer, originally from Moreland, Oklahoma. Uh, he was appointed the Secretary of Agriculture in 2003. This is his first visit to the verdict. Terry, welcome. Sure glad you'd take the time to come. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, be able to visit with the citizens of Oklahoma and tell them about what agriculture, how important it is for our state, and uh, educate them a little bit on what the Department of Agriculture does. Good. Well, what's your mission? Well, our mission is to look at agriculture with a vision and uh, not only know what agriculture is today, but what agriculture needs to be in the future. You know, we're facing many challenges with environmental change. Uh, you know, we're looking at cap and trade now, what kind of effects cap and trade might have on production of food in the future. Uh, we're just trying to work through the responsibilities we have now and see what the future of agriculture might be for our grandchildren or even their children. I see why cap and trade would have an effect on the state on the petroleum industry, but how does that reflect on the agriculture industry? Well, as we, agriculture uses a lot of fuels, carbon fuels and other fuels uh, in production of food. Also, uh, there's even some uh, discussion about the emissions that are actually emitted by livestock and uh, trying to reduce those. Uh, I was just on a conference call recently uh, on a new release by the University of Tennessee and they were talking about that we would need to reduce about 10 million acres of wheat production in the, in the United States, uh, that we would need to reduce the number of livestock in the United States, 
to get to our goals of 2025. And uh, on that conference call, uh, the question I asked was, is, well, what impact is this going to have on food production? As each of us know, uh, we have people uh, that have a limited amount of food or even starvation right here in Oklahoma, as well as the nation and throughout the world. So I think uh, it's very important that as we look at climate change and as we look at cap and trade, that we understand that uh, food production must be considered also uh, a perfect environment would not be a place that more people had starvation. Well, tell us about your department a little bit. What size is it? Uh, you're located, I guess, at the state capitol or in, the, in Oklahoma City at least. Uh, yes, we're located on uh, 2800 North Lincoln Boulevard. We have our own building there uh, on the corner. Uh, we've just completed building a new 36,000 square foot laboratory facility there that we moved into in April uh, so we can take care of all the pesticides and the water samples and the various things we do not only for agriculture but for all of Oklahoma and uh, we have many divisions at the Department of Agriculture which I think many of our uh, citizens of Oklahoma that would be surprised about. What are they? We have a consumer protection division hmm. that actually is responsible for going out uh, in the retail stores throughout the state of Oklahoma and we check our scanners and all of our pricing that goes on in the state to make sure if you buy products at any retail outlet, if it says 69 cents on the shelf, mm -hmm. when it actually goes across that scanner, that they're charging you 69 cents. Well, I can understand cents. if you're in a grocery store how that would pertain to the, the, the agriculture department, but how would that pertain to the entire retail industry? How did, what's the history there? Well, the history is that if we're going to uh, check some stores rather than have one agency check grocery stores and another agency check the Walmarts or other retail outlets that we should actually have one agency responsible to make sure that, uh, in other words, we don't want to duplicate services mm -hmm. in state government. Makes sense. What else? And then we have our animal industry division, which our state veterinarian runs that division. Uh, the animal industry is responsible for the healthy uh, health of all the livestock, whether it be beef or cattle or equine or whatever it may be. And, you know, a great example of that, of course, is we have H1N1 now. Uh, we're very fearful of that in human population, but we're also fearful of that in the swine uh, population as well. So uh, that's an example there. Another example would be the BSE issue we had uh, several years ago. Uh, it, Canada had several cases. We actually had one or two cases in the United States. And what's that effect? That affects the export of meats out of the United States throughout the world. And of course, uh, $9 billion is what agriculture provides to the economy in Oklahoma. And of that, about $4 billion of that is from the livestock sector. So that's very important. The other sector that we have is the forestry industry. We have about 7 million acres of timber in the state of Oklahoma. You primarily know. in southeast? Yeah, uh, primarily in southeast, yes. We have about 3 million acres of pl pine plantation there. But we also, uh, the hard timbers as well as the pine, so, you know, people consider Oklahoma as a wheat state, but we actually have this about the same amount of acres of timber as we do wheat. Hmm. So it's a, it's, we're a very diverse state. Uh, some other things that we do, we have the Environmental Management Services Division, uh, which we're responsible for all of the CAFO operations to make sure that our farmers and ranchers that have uh, large animal feeding operations or CAFOs, whichever permit that they might have, that meet all the environmental standards set forth uh, by EPA and also uh, by the uh, legislature in the state of Oklahoma. So we are a very diverse agency. Are the responsibilities growing or are they shrinking? Oh, the, uh, the, the responsibilities are going, uh, Mayor Cornette, like you know, uh, uh, the responsibilities of being mayor are growing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we get additional uh, unfunded mandates. Uh, each year we work in cooperation with USDA we have contracts with USDA, we have contracts with FDA, uh, we also have contracts with Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. So as, uh, as the conditions change throughout the United States and throughout the world, uh, we get additional responsibilities comes to the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture. Are you charged with trying to grow the economic pie of agriculture or are you there just to, to, to gauge and to regulate? No, we have an, a division all by itself, it's called our Market Development Division and we work with the Made in Oklahoma Coalition of now we have about 30 uh, Made in Oklahoma companies. Uh, mentioned some of those. We would have Brahms as a part of that, Advanced Foods as a part of that, Bar S as a part of that, 
uh, Griffin Foods is a part of that. Uh, we work directly with those companies to try to grow and develop and add value to the Oklahoma products. Uh, Oklahoma, in, in many years in the past, we were a large producer of raw products, but now we want to recruit industry here to add value to those products. Mm -hmm. We don't want to export wheat to China. We want to export bread and donuts, and we want to export packaged meat, not just beef carcasses. But that's how you mm -hmm. create jobs in the state of Oklahoma. Well, do you work with the Department of Commerce on the job creation aspect? Yes, so uh, we, we work very uh, closely with the Department of Commerce. An example we might talk about there is a new division that we just started about five years ago called Agriculture Tourism. Uh, we went to the legislature and visited with them to see what the opportunity would bring, be to bring people to Oklahoma to see our lifestyle. People are fascinated with the cowboy and Indian yeah. lifestyle and the yeah. heritage we have in our state. So we started that program five years ago. Uh, we now have over 500 venues in the state of Oklahoma, whether it be a winery, a ranch stay, a corn maze, or whatever it might be. And we have over 500 of those, and we work jointly with Commerce on that. In fact, our funding uh, comes to the Department of Agriculture, and we give $200,000 to the Department of Tourism to do all of our promotion uh, for that program. Hmm. Let me get us to a break. We're visiting with Terry Peach. He runs the State uh, Department of Agriculture. We'll be back with more on The Verdict right after this. From the first grade on, I knew I wanted to be an artist. That's all I ever thought about. I approach it much different than the normal weaver in that I look at my warp yarns, which are your base yarns, as a palette that gives excitement to the cloth because you never know what you're gonna get. I'm sure it's something I feel, not something I talk about a lot, um, the spiritual aspect of it, but it is there, it's below the surface and it's guiding me. I feel very blessed to be a Chickasaw. I feel like I have just been given this heritage. It gives me a whole reason for doing the beadwork patterns in my weave structures. Seeing the Chickasaw tribe fostering art, using art, and how valuable it is to the tribe is inspirational. And the creative thought, you know, it's in business, it's in economics. It's, it's what gives us meaning, it's what gives us depth. It's what makes us see the beautiful of the world. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. back on the verdict we're talking to Terry Peach he's the Secretary of Agriculture for the state of Oklahoma. Terry you got a lot to do and a lot of responsibility how many employees do you have? Uh, we have about 446 uh, employed on, a, on any normal day our uh, ceiling is 505 but of course we can't we don't have all of those funded but uh, with the turnover we have we usually have from 400 to four, 450 to 460 employed at one time. <laughs> and, and those are full-time employees? Yes those are full-time employees. Yeah. What are the significant issues facing Oklahoma agriculturists today? Well, I think uh, some of the things that are facing agriculture today is, as we talked a little bit earlier, I think there's some fear about what the climate change legislation might bring for agriculture's mm -hmm. future. I think there's some concern about uh, what cap and trade might do uh, to food production and agriculture in the future. Uh, we, we have an association called the, the uh, Southern Association of State Departments of Agriculture, which I'm 
actually a board member of, and then a National Association of State Departments of Agriculture. So that way we're able to keep on track of uh, national legislation and what's going on in Washington, D.C., and try to educate and have some impact on the effects of national legislation would have on agriculture in the state of Oklahoma. Now, who's your boss? Do you report to the governor? Uh, yes, I'm uh, appointed by Governor Brad Henry. Uh, I came on board when the governor was elected uh, in March of 2003 and had the pleasure to serve under Mr. Henry this, both terms. Now, you're a third generation farmer, uh, I read from reading your uh, website. Uh, what got you off the farm and into Oklahoma City? Well, actually, uh, yes, uh, we homesteaded in, uh, in Woodward County in 1898. My grandparents came here in a covered wagon, uh, went to Oklahoma State University and taught vocational agriculture and couldn't wait to move home and farm and get rich. You know, I think that's every, <laughs> every uh, young farm boy's dream. But uh, I, I was very involved in politics uh, when I was a younger man and uh, worked with uh, Senator Bourne for some time on many issues and had the opportunity to serve as the state director of USDA uh, from, 2000, um, from 1992 to 2000 through the Clinton administration. So uh, was enjoyed that position very much, got to uh, learn more about how farm programs are created, how farm bills are implemented, and then at the end of the Clinton administration I moved back to the farm and uh, was there for two mm -hmm. years. and. Uh, then uh, just had the opportunity to interview for this job with Mr. Henry and came back into public service. Uh, I think that many more true farmers and ranchers that does it full time should get more engaged uh, in the future of what agriculture can be and uh, because you bring a different perspective. Uh, there's 50 of us throughout the entire United States and there's probably less than 10 of us that are actually full time farmers and ranchers sitting in these commissioners and secretaries of agriculture positions. How do you divide up the economic pie that's produced by people producing agriculture in Oklahoma? Is it, is it, is it by people are growing or are they, are they with livestock or how, how does the, 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 uh, the brackets break down? Well, uh, if I understand your question, the hmm. largest sector would be the livestock sector. Hmm. Uh, the livestock sector would bring in, as I mentioned earlier, about three and a half to four million dollars, a billion dollars each year to the Oklahoma That would be economy. beef and pork? That would be beef and pork and poultry. Hmm. And those three would make up the largest sector of that. Of course, uh, as we see the demographics changing in Oklahoma, we're seeing more goats uh, production coming into our state and various other species that are, that are small at this point in time. Hmm. And then we would move over into uh, the second sector would be crop production, of course, wheat being a large uh, commodity. Has wheat in our state. always been our largest crop? Yes, wheat has always been our largest crop uh, in the state of Oklahoma uh, because it's a diverse crop. We're able to benefit not only from the grain production, but we're also able to benefit from the grazing of wheat, which, uh, with Oklahoma being located so uniquely geographically, uh, we can graze our wheat and people in north of us have a challenging time doing that because their growing season is so short and then people further to the south uh, need that wheat to be able to freeze to make a crop. Mm -hmm. And to kind of explain what that is for our listeners yeah, that may not would, understand, yeah. <clears throat> we would plant our wheat crop in Oklahoma uh, sometime in September. That's what you refer to as winter wheat? Yes, winter wheat. We would plant that crop in September and then those producers that would like to graze that crop, they would be able to turn their cattle in about mid-November. Now that's assuming that we would have normal rainfall and normal growth patterns. And then if you were going to graze those cattle, you could take them off by about March 1st and still be able to harvest that crop for grain. But so if it you chose... serves two purposes. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a multi-purpose mm. crop. But many of our producers, when grain prices are low, will go ahead and graze that wheat right on through until June. Mm -hmm. So you, Oklahoma is very unique uh, in that instance. Uh, for, for example, this year with uh, low grain prices like they are, we may see uh, more acres of wheat grazed out this year than we would on an average year. Mm -hmm. What's second beyond, behind <laughs> wheat in, from an agriculture standpoint? I, I, second probably behind <laughs> wheat would be hay. You know, we raise a lot of not only alfalfa hay, but we raise a lot of prairie hay and native hay. With our tremendous uh, equine business that we have in Oklahoma and our tremendous number of cows in the state of Oklahoma, there's a great demand for hay production. 
uh, both alfalfa hay and grasses and hybrid uh, sorghum sedan grass hays. Does your department, uh, <clears throat> with the concurrence of the legislature, I suppose, issue regulations on uh, crop production or uh, livestock handling? Actually, we have very few uh, regulations issued by the legislature. Uh, most of our rules that we operate under for livestock health protection is actually rules that we administer through the Department of Agriculture with our state veterinarian. Uh, Dr. Becky Brewer is our veterinarian and we would implement a rule and then of course those rules have to be passed and approved by both the House and the Senate and signed off on by the governor. You mentioned briefly the commercial timber industry. Is, is that a growing industry in Oklahoma? Oh, uh, the, the timber industry has been tremendous in the state of Oklahoma up until the ec economic downturn that we're in now, of course. Uh, our timber industry in southeast Oklahoma is seeing probably more stress than it's seen in, in mm. the last 20 Why years. Why would it be so effective? Uh, it's so effective because we don't have any home starts. I see. Uh, you know, we, we produce uh, plywood and fiberboard and tubifores, and uh, the timber industry so goes the timber industry as the construction industry grows. Is so, most of that exported to manufacturing uh, in other places? No. Well, it's, it's exported to other places in the United States. Right. Uh, most of the timber that's exported out of the United States comes out of the Northwest. Uh, the timber industry up in the far northwest, Washington and Oregon and up in the can Canadian area. Most of the timber that we produce here, of course, we've had Warehouser Warehouser has a, a large facility in southeast Oklahoma. Huber has a large uh, sawmill and a pr production facility in southeast Oklahoma. But uh, those, those facilities right now are just in minimal operation due to the terrible downturn in the economy and in home construction. Does the Heron family still have a, a timber operation? Oh, yes, Southeast the Heron Oklahoma? families are, are not only vital but to the timber tree industry in our state, but they're very vital in southeast Oklahoma to, the, to our Forest Heritage Center that I don't know if guests yep. here have visited, but I would encourage everybody go and tour that center in southeast Oklahoma. But they're so much involved in being such great philanthropists yep. for the state of Oklahoma also. They're a, they're a role model family for all citizens for Oklahoma. About 30 seconds left here. What would you like the people that watch this show to know about your department? Well, I would like for people to know and understand that the Department of Agriculture is very concerned about the future of Oklahoma. Uh, agriculturists are very, very concerned about the value and the quality of the water that we have in our state and have worked very hard to make sure that they are environmentalist. Sometimes uh, people, it's easy to point at agriculture and say we don't protect the environment, but the reality is there's only 2% of us out there. So it's hard for us to get our voice spoken, but uh, we truly care. My family's lived on our farm for 110 years. Nobody wants to harm our environment. No one wants to take better care of it because I have two granddaughters that I want them to be able to farm 50 years from now. Terry Peach is the State Secretary of Agriculture. Thanks for coming. Thanks on the for bird. coming. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Kent and I'll have a final word after this. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. 
Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarvel Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarvel Report online. Welcome back to The Verdict. Nice visit with Terry Peach. Yes, he does just a grand job <clears throat> supervising an awful lot of disparate activities. They've got a lot of things going on, and he's on top of things. Very engaging fellow. We have a couple of websites that we'd like to pass along to you so you can get more information. If you'd like more information about the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, you can go to their website at www.oda.state.ok.us. Or if you have an idea for a show that you'd like to see on The Verdict, you can um, call Ken at home and wake him up and get him out of bed. Anytime. Or, Anytime. Or the preferred method would be to go to the Internet and to go on The Verdict's website and then tell us about that show that you'd like to see. It's TheVerdict.tv. Yeah, the we do pay attention to that, by the way. Absolutely. We have uh, 451 shows as of today, and a lot of those ideas have come from you. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Verdict. I hope you have a great 2010, and we will see you next week right here. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.